morning, I'm David Lick. I am on the board of directors for Itasca Waters, which is a local water advocacy organization in Itasca County. And I'm here today to talk to you folks about an event that we're taking a partnership role with the City of Grand Rapids down at the new KAXE pedestrian bridge. What we're trying to do is to demonstrate to the public what native shoreland plants look like and what they do to purify and filter water that reaches our lake and streams in Itasca County and currently all over the country. But what these partnerships do is they solidify relationships in the county to demonstrate to the public that these are important things to consider when living around as much water as we have in Itasca County. I've been on this um, stage before and talked about, you know, how important it is that water be protected in Itasca County. It seems to many residents that there's no issue with water, but keep in mind that it's a real fragile resource and that there isn't a lot of it. Um, we have a lot of it in Itasca County, but all of it flows out. And today what I would like to explain to you is what we're trying to do to educate the public about making sure that they're doing everything they can around lakes and waterways to filter that water before it enters the lake or the stream. First of all, the native plants that I'm talking about are plants that were here originally when there weren't people here. They are plants that have large root systems. They don't require a lot of watering. They don't require a lot of upkeep once you get them established. And what happened this year is we made an arrangement with the University of Minnesota Extension out at the North Central Experiment Station and Prairie Restorations to grow native plants. And they have a greenhouse accessible, which really helps up in the North Country like this. And they were kind enough to start the plants for us and then plant them out in their field. And then this spring, um, I organized or we organized a group of people from the high school, uh, Rachel Newman's horticulture class. And they were good enough to come out and help dig those plants out and pot those plants so that we had pots ready to go for transplanting when the need arised. In the meantime, we made arrangements with the city of Grand Rapids with their new pedestrian bridge, which has a high slope on it near the Mississippi River, to put those plants in place. And we really welcome partnerships. Our mantra is team up for clean water. And Grand Rapids City really came to the forefront. They're prepping the soil. And on the 17th of June, we're going to go down and put these plants that the horticulture class helped do and the University of Minnesota Extension came about with planting for us. We're going to put a couple hundred plants in there and these partnerships are really important to us because we can't function without them and it also supports the foundational effort of the educational ability of Itasca Waters to carry on. So tomorrow what we plan to do is we have a person who's going to lead that planting and he happens to be uh, a person who volunteers with Itasca Waters as a shoreland advisor. And for all you viewers and listeners, we have a program through Itasca Waters, and that website is itascawaters.org, where anybody in the county can request from Itasca Waters a consult from one of the shoreland advisors that we have asked, which are just citizens of Itasca County that understand the concept of what we're trying to do. Keep in mind what we're trying to prevent is the phosphorus and the nitrogen, which is in soil and also comes from runoff and sewage and all those types of things to be filtered out before it enters the water. We have six watersheds, main watersheds in Itasca County, and we have forested area. And keep in mind that forested areas have huge root systems that pull that phosphorus and nitrogen out and make plant material and biomass. And what we would like to see on shorelands is we would like to see it revert back to what it looked like years ago. And we realize that people still want beaches and they want to be able to play around the lake and have a view, but that is all accomplished by using trees and native vegetation 
to do that. Trees, you can trim the branches off. Cedar trees grow well. You, of course, have to um, fence them in to keep the deer away from them because they think that it's candy. But all of that vegetation is really, really beneficial. Lawns are literally very little benefit to lakes because they have such a small, small root system. And as you all well know, we've been in kind of a drought period in the month of June here and May, and now those lawns are looking brown and dried out. And these native plants, once they're established, will be able to tolerate that dryness. They also provide a pollinating system for all of the beneficial insects that we have around here. Um, the, the, num the names of the plants tomorrow that we're going to be putting in the ground are ones that you probably refer to as weeds, and that's basically what they are. But keep in mind that the root systems can be two and a half to three feet deep. So some of the ones that we're planting are fragrant giant hyssop, which is in the mint family. We're also planting wild bergamot, which is in the mint family. They both have lavender flowers and they grow with full sun and they'll grow in a little bit of a moist area. We're gonna plant aster and we're also gonna plant oxide daisy. Now in addition, Prairie Restorations has sent us a package of seeds that we're gonna broadcast into that space along with some, some grasses. So in the next couple of years at that site, you're gonna be able to see some, a, a well-developed natural um, pollinator type shoreland garden. And we wanna use this as a demonstration project so that we can show people what these things look like and what they can possibly accomplish when they try it at their own place. Now, in addition, these things also stabilize lake shores. Again, it's all about roots, folks, and we got to have those large root systems. People talk about wave action from different situations on lakes these days. There's ways of preventing that erosion and losing your shoreline, but you've got to have the right vegetation in there. And willows and dogwoods have become extremely friendly to those shorelines by bundling them up, laying them in the lake along the shoreline, and letting the sediment from the wave action fall behind them, and they ultimately seed in and prevent erosion of your shoreline. Now, you might need a place to go cut those things, and there are places where the county, the forested lands will be available to do that. But again, those are situations where you have to get permission to cut that stuff and we'll work out ways of getting that for you. Um, we have a large, well done website which explains a lot about Shorelands. Please take the time to visit it. It gives a lot of ideas on different situations on trying to prevent erosion and also just protecting water. Um, it isn't something that you have to be an extremist to do. It's just basic, foundational, ecological things that provide biodiversity for lakes and shorelines. So please, if you have a chance, go take a look at what's been done down there. We'll get some signage down there about the partnerships that were involved between the University of Minnesota, Grand Rapids High School, and Itasca Waters. The money that we're using to do has been a contribution between the city and also Itasca Waters too. So keep in mind trying to do this on your place and if we can just get some momentum going with people trying this on different lakes, you like what you see and you won't be spending time mowing things all of the time. Pesticides and herbicides are also not necessary on this na native vegetation and that's also beneficial to the pollinator organisms that we have around here. So thanks for your time and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you. Hopefully you'll get a chance to go down and look at the demonstration sites. We also have one at the YMCA garden and Wabana Township is going to install one up there. So there's things happening throughout the county and hopefully as people start to incorporate these concepts, um, the local um, nurseries and local flower places like bloomers and buyers are stocking native plants, which you can also purchase but there's suppliers throughout Minnesota. But keep in mind that what you want is you don't want cultivars, you want the actual native vegetation. Thanks for your time and it's been good to talk with you.